big hand for 93.1. Jeff Martin, listen to him. Brief. He's the reason we're anybody all here. Anybody know this guy with the green shirt and the hat on here? Anybody? Anybody? Do you know Chiefy? That's the new thing. Do you know Chiefy? Chiefy, come on out. What what is that thing called that you're doing now? The catching, cooking the local catch. Cooking the local catch, powered by 4C. Yeah, that's right. Watch the show; it's awesome. They go out, they catch uh, lobsters and get fish, and they take it and cook it. Chiefy's on it. That's do I need to say more if Chiefy's on it? Right? Thank you, Chiefy. Thank you, 4C. Who's next right there? Let, uh, let me bring out. Malcolm, I'm sorry, Malcolm from Pelican, the Pelican local food writer. Who better to have here tonight to tell us which one's going to be the winning chef? So everybody read the Pelican. You'll have a big story on it as well, I'm sure. Last but not least, our last judge is Lad Atkins, all the way up from the Keys. 1990, Lad Atkins created the Reef program, the Lionfish program, and created Reef. He's the reason we're all here. So if you're having a good time, give him a big round of applause. <laughs> Lad, Lad's also with Frost, a new uh, an environmental group, right? Science Museum group. He's got a booth in the back. Stop by, say hi. He actually has some fish on the table. If, you wanna, if you're want to, you not familiar with lionfish, you can come by and see one of them. Don't touch them, though. <laughs> they have the spines on them. Kids, do not touch. All right? So we're going to get these guys out there, get them eating some lionfish, and then we'll find out later who's going to be the winner. Is, is lionfish a well-known topic in Colorado? That's a great question. I would say in my office it's a well-known topic because I make everybody talk to me about it, and sometimes I bring it back with me from Miami and make them eat it. But no, it's not well known at all. What does it mean when you say the human dimensions of lionfish? A lot of times conservation or natural resource management science gets siloed into just ecology or just everything else like social science. So I came from an environmental science background, so more of the natural biological type of science. And then later in my career, I learned about this other field that tries to marry ecological information and knowledge with social science. And to me, that seemed like the way to go because if people are the reason for some sort of natural resource problem or issue, which I would argue that that's usually the case, I don't think conservation would exist if people didn't exist, then I would think that people would also be the solution. So by studying social science, I get to study the root of the problem um, and also the root of the solution. So in this context, it's great because with lionfish, lionfish don't have a, a predator here as an invasive species, so we have to be the predator. So if we don't understand humans and why all these divers of this tournament, for example, are here, killing lionfish, then how can we expect to invest effectively in campaigns and programs and management strategies to engage more people like that, who will then remove more lionfish from the ocean consistently and in perpetuity.
Jamaican club or Jamaican. So we'll go to the Jamaican club in Fort Lauderdale. Uh -huh. Or Jamaican club in Miami. But I've never gone anywhere really around Pompano Beach. Uh -huh. What's the craziest thing to do in Pompano? I have no clue. <laughs> you know, a lot of my passengers, uh, the, the stuff that they're into, I'm pretty sure you guys are not into that. They're, they're so open about doing cocaine. That's the craziest oh, thing. Oh, what? Yeah. Oh, my in God. In Pompano? Yes. You would just be so surprised. Like, I'll drop people home, like, no matter what age. They're like, yeah, I'm going to go home and do a line. I'm like, do a line or what? Oh, coke. Okay. To be at home? To stay at home, huh? Okay. Yeah, they, they do that a lot here. That's the craziest thing I've heard of people doing it Oh, though. this is crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm not used to hearing about stuff like that. In Atlanta and even like in New York, you don't really hear, you know, you know people are not really out in the open. They talk about smoking weed, but yeah. I've never, ever heard this many people be like, oh yeah, I do coke and I do this and I do Oh, really? Like, okay. Yeah, it's true. In New York, uh, usually, I mean, Almost everybody likes smoke weed, mm -hmm. or, but not everybody talks about any other like kind of drug. No, it's yeah, alcohol and weed is what everybody uses. Yeah. And then like you can't smoke from any like you have to if you're gonna get weed here you have to get it from somebody you trust because they like to season it with cocaine. I've seen someone do it before in my old apartment. We had to move out so quick because it was so scary. But I was cooking in the kitchen one day and this guy was rolling a blunt. And I was like, okay, do you think? And then I saw him pull out this bag of cocaine and he sprinkled it all over the place. I could not believe what I was seeing. What is that called, the uh, marijuana with cocaine? I, I don't know. I never tried that. I didn't know that exists. I have no clue. Why would you mix those two drugs? Exactly. Chasing iguana. No, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> it makes no point, I mean. They're, they're crazy. Wow. If you didn't notice, there's so many like rehabilitation centers. Did oh. you guys see that? I thought it was for the elderly people. No, Those are for drug addicts? Yes. Seriously? Yeah, yes. I'm like, you, the, there's houses too. Like, there's a whole bunch of houses. Is this where you guys are going? Yeah, okay. this is changing my hey. whole thing of this uh, Pompano this bit, whatever. Pompano, like, there's houses. I'm talking about, like, there's really rich million dollar houses, like, over by where you guys are staying, just a little bit down the street. And when I tell you, these rich white men buy these houses and they make them into rehab houses. Is this a long one? Yeah, I'll be they make them into um I guess that we can just you wanna get out here? Okay. I think so, no? Yeah we could just Yeah, walk. we could just walk. Okay. Yeah, Let me yeah, just... yeah, it's So well, what do you do with this rehab have? What do you mean? Like you they, buy a mansion and then you have They make it they turn it into like a a rehab house, right? And then they um when it's almost time because people that come down here are usually rich kids, so they'll come down here and they have good insurance, so they know that. And then what they'll do is at the end of the program they will um go buy drugs and keep them hooked on the drugs so they could keep getting that revenue coming in. So they're trying to shut down all these rehabilitation houses in Pompano because it's bad. Wow, yep. thank you so much. We just oh, opened our eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Tiffany. Fun. <laughs> okay. yeah. You're welcome. There's a lot of myths and stories about, nice theories, about why lionfish are here and how they got here. Um, I think the most believable one is that People really like having them in aquariums because they're such pretty fish. Um, I know growing up in Miami, I always saw lionfish in aquariums long before they were called an invasion. And um, it's just like the Bernese python, um, they were released into the ocean by somebody who just didn't want them anymore, or couldn't take care of them anymore, or whatever the reason. There's also a myth about Hurricane Andrew somehow causing an aquarium to dump into the ocean. But um, if you dig a little bit beneath that, the surface of that myth, you'll find that um, probably not true. Um, and then the, another theory was that they were getting stuck in the ballast of ships, which is the part of the ship that helps keep it buoyant and, and balanced. And it has water in it, and they actually bring in water from the ocean into it. So if they're over in the Indo-Pacific, where lionfish are from, and then they travel here, they have to release that water again, and then lionfish could be retrieved that way. Okay, winners.
with 60 fish. They got 60 fish today. The team with the most private is Pump You Up, 60 fish, 500 in cash, and two trophies. Come on down. There should be two. So the charter boat that costs the most fish uh, is Don't Touch My Lionfish. I, I can't pronounce this other word they've used. Uh, again, two trophies, 500 bucks. Uh, Come on down. Well, I guess to begin, the first lionfish was found in Florida right around 1991, 1992. Um, the early 1990s, they didn't become as a very big problem until later and based on what people tell me it all started you know the attention all started in like 2009 2010 that time period um, so it's kind of a new issue yeah climate change has become talk has started to be talked about more because lionfish like warm water so if there are places up north that are becoming warmer, then lionfish could spread even farther. And um, last year, whatever year Irma was, two years ago, whatever, whenever a hurricane comes through, people do start to talk about, well, they're going to be moving lionfish populations the hurricanes. So lionfish eggs can travel really far because they're they lay like thirty thousand eggs at a time, you know, every like three days. And they're what do you call it? Contained in this weird substance that keeps them safe. And they can travel along currents very far. So it's really easy for them to spread. So then if you add a hurricane into that it can disperse the eggs even farther. Um, plus, it'll cause some temporary damage. The single largest but private boat, and I don't know who actually won this from the team, so I'm going to trust that the person that killed this fish is going to come up and claim their trophy, because it's only one trophy. <laughs> uh, Painkiller, 388 millimeters. That's pretty big fish. Pretty big yeah. fish. Painkiller, come on down. John, have a seat. How are you? I think you know, I learned Give me a seat. Alright, you found me a seat. A uh, drink ticket for a good fish. Yeah. That's really good. Thank you. 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 Is again, don't touch my lionfish, and it came in at 374 millimeters, also the size of the fish. So come on down, grab your prize. shoulder in the back so I'll make a cut up here as far forward as I can get and then angle it back across the ribs so I'll cut up here and then just cut down through the skin and then I'll make cut right along the back right along the backbone a shallow cut to break the skin because we're going to peel the skin off of this fish all the way back down tail and then the same cut on the bottom by the anal fin now that I have my three cuts on here what I like to do is peel the skin off you can see the great color on the skin. Some people like to leave it on. I like mine off, especially if we're going to make ceviche, which is my favorite way of having lionfish. So the skin actually peels pretty easily. Start up here in the corner. Hey, our final prize. Our final prize is for the smallest fish. 
I gotta tell you what, I thought the fish last year was small. The fish this year, I measured it at 52 millimeters. Um, wow, zookeeper, tiny. owner zookeeper came by and says, let's measure that again. He got it at about 48 to 50. I think the fish might have shrunk a little bit since I measured it. Anyway, no question about it. This was an itty bitty fish. We're gonna post it, Elaine, I need that photo if you would send it to me. We're gonna put it on our Facebook page. I would encourage you to go look at this fish. I don't know how they killed it. It's just too, unless he bumped his head on the spear because they didn't. Oh, that's like. Um, one thing that has definitely been a theme in interviews that I've conducted this summer, so 2019, um, and a few years ago, people were catching a lot of lionfish at one time. I mean, you could bring in giant coolers full. People are always defining it based on coolers. It's like, I used to bring in an entire cooler of lionfish onto my boat, and now they're like, that's really hard to do. Um, so there's a perception, and it, it is probably tr a true perception, and they're probably right about this. The populations of lionfish, at, especially at accessible places, have decreased a lot in the past few years. Um, so that's sort of a change in terminology about how people are, are talking about lionfish. They just keep saying, like, there aren't as many out there, I can't find them. Um, and I worry that there might be a little bit of complacency um, with invasive species. You never know. They could, their population could skyrocket at first and then um, it can plummet because they've reached their carrying capacity or a disease wiped a lot of them out, which did happen. The disease came through and hurt a lot of them the uh, past couple years. But it seems like that's not as much of an issue for the lionfish anymore. And another change. Actually, I don't even know if this is a change. I think it's just sort of the reality. There is some positivity attached to the lionfish because people have a lot of fun at stuff like this. They love catching it. They love, um, or no, I shouldn't say catching it. They love spearing it. Um, that's a really common response that I get when I ask why people harvest lionfish. They say it's fun, it tastes good. Um, and if we didn't have lionfish, people wouldn't be able to do all this fun stuff. I wouldn't have a PhD topic, um, and we'd have to go find something else to do. <laughs> so what have you guys done so far? Gone to the beach, yeah. scuba diving, nice. snorkeling. Uh, saw some iguanas. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I hate those things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're what? huge, huh? Mm -hmm. They're scary. Well, why do you hate them? They're scary. Oh, really? I don't like lizards. They, honestly, they declared open season on them at the uh, on the news. They said that if you see them, you need to kill them. Because they're invading and messing up the ecosystem here. So, but how do you, how do you, how would you kill one if you um, saw one? Um, the kids, they're shooting them with, um, BB guns. Is working. Okay. Oh. People okay. are running over them with their cars. They're going crazy. Huh. Yeah, they're killing what? the grass and oh, so annoying. Millions of them, huh? Mm, it's so much here, like, and they're just coming and coming. So they're like, yeah, you see them kill them. Oh, okay. Really?